go. Hi there. Welcome once again to my kitchen this afternoon. In fact, I think I should have uh, set up a little bit more light. I apologize for that. Um, because we are just simply going to be cooking pretty much as you see it here in a Dutch oven this afternoon. That's better. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'm not going... I. I'm not going to go live uh, every time I decide to make something, although I suppose I could, but um, this I'm hoping will be interesting because I have company coming uh, this evening and um, I'm going to be preparing a shepherd's pie in this uh, cast iron Dutch oven here. Um, that is, um, <clears throat> this is a uh, number eight size Birmingham stove and range uh, Dutch oven. Uh, which I've uh, shown in one or two videos, but uh, today we're really going to uh, get some use out of it. My uh, guests had uh, said that, yeah, when we had, we were talking about uh, dishes to make um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I brought up the uh, subject of uh, making a uh, Dutch, making a shepherd's pie with actual lamb, and they were definitely interested. So I figured that is as good an excuse as any to uh, do just that. Uh, I've already done a fair amount of the prep work over here in this um, Wagner Ware uh, Dutch oven here. I have been, uh, make, I've been uh, stewing potatoes, or boiling potatoes rather, so that we will have the uh, potato, uh, mashed potato topping for the uh, shepherd's pie, which means from here it's really just a matter of getting all the rest of it done, especially since uh, I have a pound of ground lamb that I have been uh, marinating as the uh, recipe instructs. So hopefully this should turn out to be pretty tasty. Lamb, of course, is very flavorful. I suppose flavorful is one word for it. It is definitely the opposite of something like turkey in that you have to flavor it. So. Uh, in addition to this, we're going to be uh, using some um, um, your usual veggies and also uh, mixing in some red wine into the gravy. So there's definitely going to be some flavor to it. Hello. Hello, uh, R. Hughes, and hello, uh, Rick Stumbau. Yes, happy Sunday. Hello, everybody. Um, as mentioned already, I'm just really once again cooking just to uh, prepare for uh, guests who apparently will be here in a couple of hours. So there's plenty of time to get this thing ready. Um, first step, okay, let's uh, get back to the recipe here, which is nice, okay. And I should have had this part ready, there we are. Okay, there we go. We have, um, all right. Now it's just a matter of starting out with uh, some veggies here because we've got carrots and onions. And carrots in particular, of course, are a um, heavy or tough, I should say, vegetable. So it's certainly a good idea to uh, make these in advance and soften the carrots. Chopped up the... Um, yeah. Vegetable, uh, yeah, the recipe says to add the uh, carrots and the onions at the same time, so I saw there was no reason at all not to simply put them together in their set in the same bowl. This should only take a few minutes, so one second. Well, no, I think I'll wait. Hello as well to Tom F. and Cynthia Wesley. Uh, yes, hi. Um, as I said yesterday, you know, I am not asking anybody to interrupt their uh, daily schedules for this because, of course, you can always watch it on a playback if you'd like. But it is nice seeing people here. Anyway, I'm at, at, as you can see, I've, uh, while I have already started, I'm just getting through the uh, basic steps here. And that is, again, softening some onions and carrots here in this uh, Dutch oven. The Dutch oven, once again, is uh, a Birmingham Stove and Range uh, number eight size Dutch oven, which is a, a nice bit of cast iron. Very happy to have obtained this one uh, fairly recently, and as you can see, I'm doing my best to use it, which of course is the whole idea here. 
R. Hughes, hello, won't be staying? Oh, that's fine, I certainly understand. Um, but but uh, that's what the reruns are for, so no need to worry. Feel free to watch at your convenience and feel free to comment. Besides, uh, cooking is a lot of fun, but a lot of it is not exactly that exciting. I mean, as you can see, I am taking the incredibly exciting step of stirring around some onions and carrots in a cast iron Dutch oven. <laughs> as mentioned, we are preparing this part in advance to soften the carrots and the onions. Please interrupt, my brain needs the fix, okay. Um, okay, no, no, not to worry. And as always, you know, comments are appreciated as well. I do not mind uh, snarky comments, to, for the most part. <laughs> and Rick Stumbaugh, I'm going to laugh at you, okay? <laughs> Great. Now I'm thinking of the movie Carrie. They're all going to laugh at you. <clears throat> Doing a poor imitation there. This is apparently going to take a few minutes, after which point, uh, let me see, da, 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 da. oh yeah, that's right, when they're almost done, we will add some minced garlic. Well, they're not done yet. At that point after that, we will then get down to the meat. Yeah, this is going to be a shepherd's pie with actual lamb. Um, I did have about a pound of ground lamb, and I am interested in uh, making it for uh, company when they arrive here in a couple of hours. Yeah, which of course means that this is a real shepherd's pie. You know, because shepherd of course means sheep, and that's why they called it a shepherd's pie. It was made with lamb. Um, the more popular uh, ground beef shepherd's pie is actually called, technically it's called a cottage pie. Not that it really matters, I mean it still tastes good. And that of course is if you're going to the terms used in jolly old England. I can barely remember the last time I actually had a... Uh, sh no, I can't say I've ever had shepherd's pie uh, at a restaurant. I remember once I did order a pot pie, and that was a chicken pot pie, and that was excellent. But not. But I can't... I don't believe I've ever had shepherd's pie from a restaurant. Though my understanding is it's fairly common pub grub, meaning that if I were to go to my local bar... Mm, well, I don't know if you'd get shepherd's pie at a bar, most bars these days. More likely you would just get mozzarella sticks, maybe a burger. <laughs> oh no, buffering. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I hope, um, if anybody, is it buffering for anybody else? I'm pretty much using the same connection I used yesterday. I'm actually using my phone this time because it's nice and easy. Oh, it does look like the onions are changing color, so I'd say we are off to a decent start at this point. What I really need to see is, I'm not sure if these uh, carrots are softened yet though, so I'm gonna have to be patient and give it another couple of minutes at least. I do have to keep uh, stirring it so as not to burn it. Not just me and my nervous habit of constantly stirring, which you folks have seen many times. Nonetheless, this, this dish is not even going to require a lid on this Dutch oven, even though I have a lid. All I'm really supposed to do is prepare all of this in advance here in the Dutch oven, mash the potatoes and cover that, and then from there, just simply um, put it under the broiler, although in this case, I'm just going to heat my uh, oven to like about 450 degrees for a few minutes. 
Yeah, the last time I tried using a broiler, I found out that, my, that there is no top broiler on this oven. Uh, the broiler is apparently underneath, and I don't think this uh, can fit in the broiler. So as a result, I'll be doing it the other way, as mentioned. Come on, Corey, get you here. Well, no need to worry. Everybody has their things to do, especially on a Sunday evening. Granted, we're not in football season, so not too much to do for most people, I would think, on a Sunday evening. Though so probably there are other sports going on. I would say we have to be close at this point. I can definitely smell it. Means what I should do is sample one or two of these carrots. Come on, like this one, for instance. Mm. Mm. They still are firm, but they do not taste crunchy. I guess I'll have to try one more. So I may be at the right point. Yeah, no, I think it's okay. Mm. Since I'm not supposed to be cooking this in the oven, I don't think I'll take a chance and I'll do it at least another minute. Mm. Forgot how much I love carrots. I've talked about this Dutch oven before. This is a Red Mountain Dutch oven. This was a wonderful score I made from eBay only recently. You m several amazing things about this. Um, I believe they actually polished the, um, under the inside of this Dutch oven here because the cooking surface is glass smooth here. You know the term glass smooth when it comes to vintage cast iron? This is definitely one of them. So even though I do have a Griswold Dutch oven that is also glass smooth, this is definitely giving that one a run for the money. All right, since we've got about a minute left, we are now supposed to add in, and it looks like we're gonna need a little bit of this. Some minced garlic. That's water from the minced garlic or oil. <laughs> and stir all that around. Of course, you do not want to brown the garlic. Well, actually, we're supposed to reserve this. That's right, so that I, uh, which means I better dig out another pot here, or bowl, or whatever. Oh, shut up. This will do. Oh yeah, as much as chaos seems to reign on this channel, I would really, I really hope this goes through without a hitch. Which is why I've got to be careful not to burn this garlic. And that means I'm probably about ready to uh, reserve it already. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, let's get this out of the way. Um, time for a glove. Because <laughs> this hot iron is hot. Step one for the veggies.
da, 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 da. Okay, veggies. Now comes the lamb. Here and here it is. As I said, this is ground lamb, I'm afraid. It's not lamb pieces. So it looks like ground beef. I can only trust what the package says and assume it is indeed lamb. There we go, that's a pretty good view. Right now, it looks like a big lamb burger. <laughs> you know, even though I try not to get unitasters in my kitchen, moments like this make me think I should probably get one of those ground beef chopping thingies. You know, the one that looks like an X. Especially for chopping ground beef. I may have to consider that. Anyway, it's really just a matter of getting this so that it's all broken apart. Oh, this smells nice. Because before putting, before I did this, I added some uh, marinade stuff to the, um, to the lamb. Especially some um, Worcestershire sauce, or I should say Worcestershire sauce. The joke of mispronouncing Worcestershire sauce is way too common to the point where at least I think it's overdone. <laughs> so yes, yeah, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire or Washer Sister sauce. So, but yes, it is Worcestershire. It's, it's really not that hard, you know. I mean, you could say liverwurst or bratwurst, and that's what this is, worst. Your Worcester, Shear, or Shire. Either way would be fine. Anyway, looks like it's releasing some liquid. So I figure I can at least cook it until the liquid comes off. Lamb, on the other hand, is a very lean meat. So if this was ground beef, there would be a lot more liquid. So this really is not so bad. Mary had a little lamb with a side of onions and gravy. There's another uh, version of that joke that is X-rated and I'm not going to go into that. Hmm. Cottage pie the last couple of weeks now, oh yeah. My brother's been doing cottage pie for the last couple of weeks. Nice. <laughs> well, there we go. You're doing a good job. You are spreading the word, getting him sucked into our cult. The cult of cast iron. Of course, this is a cult that your local church would approve of. doing too badly. Spare piece of carrot, that's okay. And again, it's really just making sure it's all browned and no pink. I am thinking I should do this at least until the uh, liquid boils off. On the other hand, I'm not sure if that'll dry it out too much. Maybe I won't go quite that far. Because again, this is not whole pieces of lamb, it's ground. And there are differences. As I mentioned when making those burgers yesterday, I like my steak medium rare with pink. I do not like my burgers with pink. And it was pointed out there is a reason for that because the Ground beef does have more uh, areas, more surface space all the way through to the center of the meat, which can allow bacteria to get in there. And that's one reason why it's probably not a good idea, though some folks disagree, 
to have pink ground beef. Likewise, especially because the ground beef is all broken up, I'm thinking that it's probably more easy to dry it out, and I do not want to do that. This is looking pretty good in that respect. So anyway, this thing's probably going to be done long before my company gets here, but that's easy enough. I'll just simply keep it in the oven at a low temperature, like 150 degrees or so, so that it will still be warm when they arrive. Meanwhile, I've got the potatoes down to the lowest setting at this point because I don't want the, <laughs> all the liquid to evaporate there. I just cut through the chase and call it with sauce. <laughs> I thought you were going to whip out the lamb cake pan for Easter again. <laughs> that would have been interesting. But I'm not sure how to use a lamb cake to make a uh, shepherd's pie. I suppose you could just do it layer by layer. <coughs> All right. Looks like it's probably about ready at this point because I'm not seeing any more pink bits. So, moving right along. Come on. Let me see. I have to get past the screensaver on the spoon again. All right. Reserve mm, any main, then set aside with the vegetables. Oh, I have to set this one aside too. Okay. That's odd, because it says here, and here, we can, uh, you know what, I'm, I don't think I need to do this, because the next step is to make gravy, and I don't see why I can't leave this in while I make gravy. So, that means we get to put in some red wine. Yeah, and there is one of those controversies about cooking in cast iron. Just as much as cooking with uh, tomatoes in cast iron, are you supposed to cook with wine and alcohol in cast iron? <laughs> um, my answer, just based on my experience, is that it's okay to do it once in a while. If you make tomato and wine dishes again and again and again, it will definitely eat through your seasoning. In which case then, you'll have to just season the pan. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to ruin the iron itself. Now at this point, I just have to do this until the liquid is reduced. Because there is a lot of liquid in here. So that just means we keep stirring. Mmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, interesting smells here between the lamb and the wine. <laughs> the fact that it's Sunday, I suppose some folks could say something about having lamb and wine on Sunday. But again, that's another subject. <laughs> Matt is, this is from you, missed that episode. Oh yeah. Hey, I have a Lodge Fryer Dutch oven lids and deer skillet seasoning. Deer skillet seasoning? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. You mean you're seasoning those things in the oven, including a deer skillet. Nice. If I may ask, is this the original Lodge deer skillet or the newer Lodge deer skillet? They're both fine cast iron pans. The older one is much more rare. Yeah, yeah you can see we, we still have a lot of liquid, so yeah, we definitely do need to reduce this. But again, there's plenty of time. Assuming my guests are on time, which they might not even be, we have at least an hour and a half to get this thing done. So, there's plenty of time. Speaking of which... Uh, da, 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 finish lamb stew. Make the gravy. So at this point, okay, oh, we're gonna add butter here, okay. 
Well, actually, even so, I think it's time for a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, it didn't say to include salt and pepper in the marinade, but I'm really not tasting it. Oh, great, I just used white pepper. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> That's what I get for keeping white pepper right next to the pepper mill. That means, where is it? Where did I put my pepper mill? Oh, it was over here, <laughs> right by the stove. There we go. <laughs> I have stories behind everything, and I'm actually proud of that, and one of them is that pepper mill. That comes, from, well, that is not my grandmother's pepper mill, alas, but she had a wooden stir, or, yeah, uh, handle uh, pepper mill. And so I grew up with that pepper mill, and yes, I wanted it, but I did not have a chance to get it. And it was because of that when I actually came across this pepper mill at Sabres for $2, I snatched it right up. That was at least 10 years ago. So I have definitely enjoyed this pepper mill. That pepper mill has settings for grinding your pepper. Fine medium and coarse and I've just left it on coarse and I've never and I've really have never had any reason to do a fine pepper grind. Well now the uh, liquid is definitely reducing. So so far so good. Let me move this over a little bit. Alright. Undo the screensaver on this phone yet again. Now, oh yes, that's right. Now it's time, of course, to do a roux. And make us some gravy. So that's what we will do. Boy, this thing's bubbling nicely. I better be careful. Do not want this thing to burn. But it certainly is making a very pleasant sound. And I'm not being sarcastic, it's a pleasant sound. All right. It says about, there we go. Check if the recipe, I mean, is this your typical gravy? Combine red wine, reduce here, add butter, whisk in the flour, slowly add beef stock. Okay, beef stock. Got it. So now I'm not using milk this time. Though that would be interesting in itself. Melted, which will not take long. Not long at all, in fact. And now for the flour. It took me a long time to find ramekins, and along the way, I found this set of uh, metal, tiny little metal, I guess, I don't know if you can call them ramekins, but they're nice little, tiny little metal cups. I believe I found them at Marshall's, and they work great for things like that. They're about two tablespoons in volume. So 
There we go. Off to a decent start. And it already has absorbed all the liquids, so we're definitely off to a good start here. And this is what I mean by the bottom of this pan. It's really glass smooth. I'm quite happy about that. That means we can now start adding liquid. A little at a time. Come up with some gravy, which means it's kind of like a race against time. One of the things about making gravy in cast iron, as I found out, is that it is far too easy for the gravy to become too thick. So, on the other hand, for something like this, thick gravy is a plus, not a minus. sure isn't taking long, is it? All right. Okay. Slowly add beef stock, whisking until smooth. Simmer to thicken. Well, that's not taking long to thicken, is it? I mean, here's all of the rest of the stock. Yay, yet again for cast iron. There we go, we've got some nice, that sure did not take long at all. All right, now that we've done that. Okay, now we got, oh good, now we get to add stuff back in. And that is the veggies. And then to this, also gonna have to add some frozen peas. So yeah, we are really at that point, aren't we? And I forgot to get the peas out of the freezer. But then again, they're frozen, so, so I don't think there'll be a problem with that. We're supposed to use about a cup of these peas, so. Uh, which means I need a cup to measure it. Okay, why not? I'll use the same cup as the, uh... Come on, Roger. How hard is it to open this silly package? Yeah, hold on. Enough. Whatever works. Assuming there's some liquid in these peas, because yeah, as you can see, this is getting pretty thick, pretty fast. And to this, one other ingredient that I don't use very often. And that would be tarragon. We said about two tablespoons of fresh tarragon. So that's what we have, or tarragon however you pronounce it. But anyway, there's the base for our shepherd's pie. It means I can probably turn off the heat at this point. So, Da, 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 da. Slowly add beef. Okay, we can have tarragon and peas. Taste and adjust the salt and pepper if needed. Keep over low heat. Oh yeah, and I preheat the oven. Good point. Let's get the oven good and ripening. 
piping hot, like about 450 degrees hot. I probably should have started doing a few minutes ago. Oh well. I'll taste a little bit of it. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> nice. I, ooh. Yeah, I think we're good. I think they'll like this. There's definitely flavor in it. Bachelor chow with flavor. All right. Let's get this all done because now we have our next step to do. That means I better clear out this workspace over here. And from here, I'm gonna have to drain the potatoes and go from there. I hope I hope I didn't overdo the potatoes and I hope the liquid did not evaporate all of it. But we are about to find out. In fact, let's go with it. Let's let you see the fun, in fact. Oh, no problem at all here for the liquid and the potatoes, thank goodness. Which means, do this nice and careful like. There we go. And I'll turn these over because it's boiling liquid. Good enough. There we go. That's why it's in the sink. Now back to here. realized I forgot to pull out my ingredients for the mashed potatoes. There we go. Basil. Um, I had a bleep is the, I mean, basil works, but don't they also use, no, definitely not red pepper flakes. Always forget something and I apologize for that. All right. Guess this will have to do. Basil. Cream. Butter. Basil cream butter. That about covers it, I think. I'm trying to think of what I might be getting. Maybe I should double check the recipe, see if it says anything. And, dun, 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 dun. Uh, milk, milk cream butter. Hmm. Okay. Well, that says milk and cream, but I, yeah, I think we'll be okay. All right, then that case. Yeah, no. <laughs> This aside, and here we go. I've done mashed potatoes enough times, I know this part at least. Butter. The water was already salted. I can add at least a little bit of ground pepper. And just a little bit of dried basil, not much. That's probably enough. And to this, we add our cream. It says milk and cream, but I don't see any reason why I can't just use cream. Other than, of course, it saves the cream, which is expensive. Come on. Always something, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I 
I need more, and I'll add milk. There, that should make them happy. And now I get to get out. Monster Masher. And I know I've told the story of this masher before. I'm gonna mix everything together here and get that butter melted. The story of the masher, that is, of course. I mean, you think this thing's big enough? Or as they might say, you think he's compensating for something? Uh, it was genuinely an accident that I ended up with something this big. Like a lot of, like a number of people, I had used dollar store mashers. And of course, the stupid things kept breaking again and again and again. So finally I said the hell with it. And went on to Amazon to look for an industrial strength or at least commercial grade potato masher. You know, the kind that they use in restaurants and the like. Anybody who does their mashing by hand, that is. And I came across this one, which was not expensive. I think it might have been 10 bucks or something. So I figured, okay, sounds good. And I ordered it and ended up with this huge monster here. Apparently, it seems that I read the uh, description. It said four inches. I thought that meant it was like four inches in length, but it's four inches in diameter, in width. Width. <laughs> so, as a result, I ended up with this monster masher. However, it does its job. It mashes potatoes like no tomorrow. So, <laughs> I've been using it for the past several years, and I love it. And that's my masher story. Meanwhile, here are our mashed potatoes. Mix this in a little bit more. There we go. Sorry, I haven't been catching comments here. I'd run aside, bus out, okay. Mental ward, okay. Then as to sibling, I done did my job. <laughs> Hey, good food. Well, I certainly hope so. I mean, I like how that uh, gravy and all that turned out. So, <laughs> anyway, there we are. We have our mashed potatoes. And so that means now that we've done that, it is simply time to assemble ourselves a shepherd's pie. I realize I'm going to have to get out uh, another spoon. Let me see. No, not that one. It has to be a whole spoon. Here it is. There we go. And pretty much that means the hard part is done. So, here's our pot. Dude, remember, clear your workspace or I shall kill you, as she said in Ratatouille. So let's get this out of the way. All right, there we go. Oh, good. Yay, aluminum. This is already hot enough that it doesn't scald me by touching it. Now it's just a matter of topping it off. And voila! <laughs> Spread it out. Oh yeah, this dude, this was not difficult. It didn't take long. Of course, it also helped that I did a lot of the prep work in advance. 
such as preparing these potatoes and dicing the carrots and onions, but even that wasn't too difficult. the other part and that of course is making a pretty little pattern on the surface of this. We could just do it as is and call it rustic. Which means we got a fork. And it also means I got a preview from these mashed potatoes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. From here, there's really no more than I guess you could say forking it up. Put something of a pattern on the top here. And then from here, it's really just a matter of popping it into the oven to brown or broil top of this. As stated, this thing doesn't fit in my broiler, which is underneath the oven, so that's why I've got to do it rather heating the oven up really high, cooking it that way. Oh yeah, that actually helps, boy. I'm actually impressed. Well, not with myself, but I mean, just simply doing this actually does make this uh, look a little bit more appealing. The rustic looks nice, but this doesn't look bad at all. And so, here we go, more or less. In fact, I think I'll be fancy. <laughs> A little bit this way, a little bit this way, a little bit this way, and a little bit this way. So lo and behold, the shepherd's pie has the star of chaos on it. <laughs> there we go. Mm. Um, mm. Right, there we go. And now it's just a matter of waiting for the oven to beep. Hmm. Jesus, take the wheel. And reminded me of Jeff Dunham's Ahmed. Oh, you're talking about other things. Okay. As long as you're, you're saying my shepherd's pie doesn't remind you of Ahmed from, uh, <laughs> yeah because I have no intention of killing anyone with this pie, not even myself. There it goes, there goes the oven. All right, that means now for the last bit. And we only need to do this for what, maybe 10 minutes? Because after all, all we're trying to do is brown the top. Actually, I need to move this over so that the door will fit. It's already cool enough I can do this with my hands. It'll make it easier enough. Which means, in we go. Ooh, sorry about that. Oh, it's definitely hot enough in here. There we go. <laughs> my oven rack still has foil on it from when I was seasoning cast iron last week. But, there we go. Now, in maybe about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, it shall be done. And, uh, I have a high dome lid that has basting tips like a lodge, but it has a cross-shaped blank area on it. Looks like the Griswold logo. Oh, I think I've seen that. And as a matter of fact, uh, the experts on the groups I know of say it's unknown. They do believe it is actually vintage, but they have no clue where it came from. So no, we cannot confirm if it, if it is Asian made either. 
But yeah, they we've seen those. Like you said, it looks like a lodge and it has this uh, like two that way and two that way, a cross shape on the top. And it has the lodge bison space underneath. We do not know where that came from. You've got yourself an unknown lid there. But cherish it and use it above all else. I mean, if you post pictures of it, I can guarantee people will go, ooh, ah. Okay. Um, other than that, well, I, I'm not sure if I should waste time until the uh, pie is done. Well, I granted it's supposed to only be a few minutes. I'll just have to check. Let's see how long it takes to brown. Then once we do that, I will take it out. I think I will put this up, this lid on to keep it warm. And then when I know my guests are getting close, I'll put it back in the oven to make sure it's hot. Came from a foster fryer and it fits good, but I have two foster lids for the fryers. Well, one of the rules of the cast iron hunt, as you probably know, is always snatch up stray lids because it'll fit something. I mean, heck, if you if it fits on a lodge pan, then use it on a lodge pan. <laughs> but that is a, a nice sounding lid. Actually, it is a nice looking lid. I have seen photos of it. One thing I should do is start cleaning up my mess. All right which means just a couple of these things will go back. I don't know. Maybe I'm using these live videos as, as an excuse for rambling on and on and on. I mean, I know I talk constantly during these live videos, and I've said the reason why, because when doing a video, your greatest enemy is dead air. You know, when, every, when absolutely nothing is happening, no, no movement, no, no sound, nothing. And just out of habit, because of that, I tend to keep on talking and talking to fill dead air, which apparently is what you're supposed to do in the broadcasting industry, so. Hmm. We got nothing better to do. <laughs> well, yeah, neither do I. That's why I'm doing this to prepare for company tonight. Hmm. Oh. I'm trying to debate. I mean, granted, that's a very heavy pie. I'm not sure if I should prepare dessert. I'm not sure what I had to prepare for dessert in uh, this period of time. What time is it now? It is 4.35. So, assuming they're on time, I have under an hour. Well, I should be able to do something. Um, well, I've already got that uh, pot in the oven, and it's 450 degrees. Maybe I should stick a pan in there and make a cornbread. Hmm. Well, why not? All right. In fact, there's an excuse for you. Let's dig something out. <laughs> of course. Why not? The New York pan, the one that I showed recently. Why not make a cornbread in this? All right, that means I have to move this out of the way. However, Scrape up this extra mashed potatoes because there's no need to waste it. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, this is good stuff. Mm. Mm. One second, folks. Right. Which means if I'm, if I'm gonna make cornbread in this, well, I gotta stick it in the oven. So, one last look. Not seeing any browning on the top of that yet. I can only hope it turns out okay. 
Oh, I've been tempted to buy a Texas pan like that. I would advise yes, if only because, <laughs> well, you'd have it. And they're not very expensive. Though there are two retailers that sell those Texas pans for $20 or less. One is H-E-B and the other is Kohl's. Go on their websites and you'll see them. So you'll definitely have a conversation piece. I will also say that, so. Hmm. Let me see. Um, well, I could start, well, maybe. I mean, I gotta start mixing the cornbread mix together. Although, um, well, yeah, no, I saw already that that thing is not uh, done yet. So, here we go again. Let us see what we can do. Um, that means, time to get another bowl. Also, um, how big is that pan? I believe, said about two cups worth or so. I mean, I only need to use half of a pizza ball to make it. So it's probably smaller than a number eight. Okay. I'm really talking to myself as I say that. Which also means need to get my cornbread recipe. Because I don't have it memorized. Give me just a second, please. All right, we will do this. Sorry, I am getting my cornbread recipe as fast as I can, which means going on to my website. Come on, there we go. here. Desserts. Bam. Skillet cornbread. This, of course, again, is what you see on my website. So, That is how I prefer it. I mean, the typical recipe goes for two cups cornmeal. And of course, I do it a little bit different. Oh, that also means I have to break out my measuring cups because I did not prepare this in advance. There's one, where are the others? They are, the measuring cups are still in here. I think they are, shit, my bad. I washed the dishes, but left them in the rack. So give me a second. There we go. All right. Now, start with one cup cornmeal. And to this, I do my favorite variation on cornbread. Masaharina corn flour, so that it gives it a somewhat finer texture than just using whole cornmeal. On the other hand, there are folks who say you shouldn't use flour in cornbread. So, this is not wheat flour, it's corn flour. So there we go. And this, we've got our usual baking powder, sugar, and kosher salt. Oh yeah, that's one other thing. Uh, baking powder, sugar, kosher salt. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. <laughs> the other thing, of course, is that I like sugar in cornbread. I'm a Yankee at heart. So if you are offended by sugar and cornbread, well, I'll have to ask you to turn off this video. 
because it's me and my guests who will be eating this cornbread. And I think I will leave it at that because I'm not interested in starting another big deal, another uh, war here. All right, there we go. Baking powder. I can't really measure it with a regular teaspoon. Um, also, a teaspoon of kosher salt. Do some whisking. I am very glad that I got myself into a habit of putting my ingredients back right away, pretty much as soon as I'm done using them. I mean, besides, it follows the rule, keep your workspace clean, but, well, it's that much I don't have to put away afterwards. Of course, as well, I live by myself, as I've said many times, and there's nobody to put things away but me. So nobody to blame for not doing the dishes. I have to do it, otherwise no one will. <laughs> Although I think any parent will say that too. If I don't do the dishes, no one will. Here are our dry ingredients. So at this point, in fact, oh yeah, that's the other thing I should do. Prepare some fake buttermilk because I do not have buttermilk on me right now. Uh, this is, and that means making curdled milk. And that, means, once again, use some whole milk and some vinegar. Which, by the way, is a nice money-saving technique or tip, if you don't mind. If you have not done this, give it a try. I have just measured out one cup of whole milk. And to this, I'm just throwing in about one tablespoon, yes, one tablespoon of vinegar. I love apple cider vinegar, so that's what I use. But anyway, you just let this sit for maybe 10 to 20 minutes and it will curdle. And it will have the consistency of buttermilk. You do not, also, you do not taste vinegar at all in this. Before I proceed with my wet ingredients, I should wait at least until I know that pan is good and hot. Also, I should definitely check the uh, shepherd's pie. Ooh, I think I might be all set at this point, in fact, with the shepherd's pie. So, because it's bubbling, so I think I better stop. right now and you will see. Yeah. Yeah, this is enough, I guess. All right, I'm gonna have to let this cool and dry off. Nuts, it just occurred to me. I thought I had it. 
hope I didn't I hope I didn't lose it. I could have sworn I had a um, torch, you know, that little handheld torch thing that you use for browning things or making creme brulee or all that. Still, this is not bad. I definitely do need to uh, let it dry off, though. So I think I'm just going to have to leave it as is. Hello, Kay Clock. Such a gorgeous spring day here. Thunderstorms last night. Hi, Kay Clock, and you're just in time to see... Holy cow, have I been doing this for an hour? <laughs> you're just in time to see the results of making a shepherd's pie. And, yeah, it's definitely bubbling, which it was not supposed to do. I'm thinking there might be a little bit of li extra liquid in there. So all I can do is leave it as is. It was supposed to brown in the oven, and instead it's doing this. Which is why I'm regretting I do not have that torch that I thought I had. Now I'm a little miffed. I'm checking my baking drawer right now because I'm, was, I thought I had it in my baking jar. Let me check a couple of other places. I may very well have lost that torch during the move. And that bums me out, but nothing I can do. It just means I don't have it. Oh well, we need to all chip in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just happened to, yeah, as I said, I just decided to do this uh, cornbread just on the fly, just for the heck of it. Oh, good. It's already not bubbling, so that's good. And that means I guess I can cover it now. Which also means I can concentrate on this cornbread. In fact moving that uh, pan down to the lower shelf. All right, um, actually I know what I'll do. I'll put this thing on top of the, yeah, oh, nope. <laughs> I'll put this thing on top of the stove. That'll keep it out of the way. All right, yeah. move that over. Back to the cornbread meanwhile. All right, what I need to do next are Boy, I did not anticipate that this would take so long. I'm sorry to take up all your time, folks. All right, from here, I need to dig myself out an egg. And of course, I need also need some butter. And in fact, I need to melt some butter. So, that means, looks like I'm gonna have to play with a little bit of cast iron, unless I want to use, um, a microwave. <laughs> what a concept. Alright, let me dig out, get another cast iron pan here. <laughs> uh, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Don't look now. We've got ourselves a little Bass Pro Shops ashtray skillet. Which they are not paying me to do this. It was made by Lodge, who is also not paying me to do this. But we get to go here. Ah, uh, come on. What did I do wrong? There we go. We can get down to a very, very low flame. This is not going to take long at all. And how much butter am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do half a stick of butter. So that is what we will do as fast as I can. Come on. All right. Now I'm almost thinking I should have done this on Wednesday since this seems to be taking up pretty much the same amount of time you would see on the regular cast iron Wednesday. 
Anyway, there's, there's actually just enough room in this to melt half a stick of butter. I've done it before. It's gonna be close, but there is just enough. That amount of butter will take up the whole pan. Yeah, it is going to be close. I will say that. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and here's hope. No, I think it'll be okay. I think I will actually stir it around to, like, melt it faster. But, yeah, no, I do agree it. I hope I didn't make a mistake, in fact. Maybe I should avoid an accident. <laughs> Silly me. semi-new pan, the Lady Best Pan, the BSR Lady Best Pan, which is smaller than a number three skillet. Um, this is going to be hot. In fact, I should turn off the fire so as not to, uh, like, set this thing on fire here. There we go. I suppose better safe than sorry. Now I can turn this back on. Still, I can turn it down low. There we go. Uh, this might be a first for this YouTube channel. I avoided an accident. All right, there we go. It means I have yet another cast iron pan to clean, but I'm kind of used to that by now. Well, I can see now what I'm going to be using this um, Lady Best Pan for. I think that's actually just my burner that's causing it to rock. The other uh, pan, the other Lady Best Pan that I have is in fact a spinner, but this one, I did test it. It, it, it does sit flat. I figure by the time this is done, oh, while I'm thinking of it, one last thing. Gotta get out an egg. Oops, did I bump that again? All right. Because who remembers to take out the eggs? All right, and then after this, uh, once this is done, definitely have to clean up my mess. Still, again, this is hardly the worst way to spend a Sunday evening. I appreciate anybody who has uh, stayed along. And those who have not, that's fine. You can always watch the playback. Right. This should be ready any moment. Anyway, once this is done, that pan should be good and hot, which means I'll be able to move on to the next step. And that is the wet ingredients. In fact, I should probably even turn this heat off, in fact, because I don't want this to be, again, I don't want this to be boiling hot butter. This is probably more than enough already. I should probably move it off the heat, in fact. Let me make sure my workspace is clear here. So, let's... 
again to the cornbread. And here is the Lady Best pan over here. Also, that um, curdled milk is also over there. All right, having done that, Hello as well, Billy Lee Lawton. I just put a picture of my waffle iron. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll have to check that out when this is done. Thank you very much. All right, what do we have now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, dry ingredients, wet ingredients. Uh, in addition to this, I've got to get myself out a cup of whole milk, which will be used, of course, for, uh, well, just that, making the cornbread batter. So, since I seem to be, oh, okay. Well, no, I don't trust myself. Since I seem to be low on other measuring cups, I'll have to use the big one. <laughs> I can see once this cornbread is done, definitely gonna have to clean up my mess immediately so that I will be ready for my guests. Wait a second, I didn't even have to do this. I could have poured it right from the container. Oh, well. As usual, I'm not thinking. Oh well. My bad. Well, it's, well, again, nobody is gonna wash these dishes but me, so that's my own fault. All right, nonetheless, here we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, one tablespoon of vinegar. Here's okay, one big. All right, all right. We are about ready at this point to start mixing in our ingredients. The wet ingredients, that is. Also, I've learned not to use a whisk with the wet ingredients. So it's time to dig out a spatula. And away we go for part two of this here cornbread. Start, of course, with the egg. I should mix in the egg because if the butter is too hot, I do not want to scramble the egg. <laughs> that would not be good. Now from here comes the butter. Yeah, for folks who have just started, after, yeah, after preparing the shepherd's pie, which is currently resting on the stove, I am preparing a cornbread for dessert. So we have Okay, da, 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 da. all right, that is pretty much it, except I just realized one last thing and then I'll continue this. I've got to add some oil to that pan and heat it up. So, let's do that. <laughs> Again, this is why most of the smarter cooking channels don't do these things live. I mean, as you can see how disorganized I am. Chances are, or at least I hope, they are just as disorganized. Only because this is live, I can't hide my mistakes. Here is that New York pan again. Some corn oil. I like using corn oil for my cornbread, not just because it's corn, but also I find it does a good job of browning the underside and not burning the underside of the cornbread. Anyway, there we are. So we'll put this back in the oven for the moment. I can even turn this down now that I'm thinking of it.
Alright, now to get back to it. This aside, because now, let me see. Egg. Um, oh yeah, that's right, that's what I forgot. No wonder it seemed too dry. I forgot the buttermilk. Or the almost buttermilk. There we go. Now it's definitely starting to look more like a batter. There we go. Not bad already. <laughs> I did a cornbread recently on TikTok and somebody and a couple of people commented that the batter looked way too thick. Now there are still lumps in this batter, but Hopefully I'll be able to thin that out with just a little bit more milk. Hey, what do we have here? <laughs> what Cedum said, we are forced to take a vow of secrecy. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't been able to follow the conversation again, and I'm sorry for that. But if a vow of secrecy isn't in involved, it sounds interesting. Nonetheless, yeah, it's still too thick. So now it's time to start adding milk. And here's why I should have just added it from the container. But I'm not thinking. I think it's also because when I'm doing these live videos, I'm trying to like focus on the task at hand. And as you've already seen, I tend to forget other things when I focus on the task at hand. Nonetheless, yeah, it's still too thick. A little bit more. Oh, well, that's looking better now. Now it's starting to look more like cornbread batter. Still kind of thick. Okay. Maybe just a touch more. There we go. Once again, thank you very much for your patience and just standing by while I waste all your time like this, folks. Thank you so much. Yeah, this will probably be more than enough. This looks decent. All right. Let's see if there are any comments from the peanut gallery. Uh, most of us south, corn, uh, cornbread in the shape of, uh, done breads in the shape of other than New York in honor of this viewership, I would vote for Illinois. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Well, those cast iron pans, well, number one, the company is going out of business, so they're not going to be making any more, and they only have a few states left in their inventory. Number two, those pans are expensive. It was kind of like a, uh, an expense that I probably shouldn't have done <laughs> to get that New York pan. Now that I have it, I am not regretting it though. But no, I am not going to be getting any other state pans, especially since there'll never be another chance to get a pan shaped like Massachusetts. But there we go. That means now, let's do this right. And there we go. Here we go. Now comes the fun part. The other fun part, that is. Whoa. There we are. Means first, pour this out. I'm not sure if that's a mandatory step in making cornbread, but it definitely helps. 
putting the hot oil into the batter before you add it to the pan. But there we go. That means now comes the second best part of making cornbread, the sizzle. Probably enough. In fact, I have too much batter. Mm. Looks like I could probably add a little bit more here. A little bit more there. Yeah, because obviously I'm not sure how much batter to add, getting it all over the place. But that should be enough. All right, then that means time to go into the oven once again. There we go. In it goes. Now it's just a matter of waiting until it's done. And I'm betting that won't take long because that's a small pan. So that cornbread probably is not going to take very long. All right. I'm thinking, especially since, wow, we're at pretty much the same time I would do on, normally on a Wednesday. <laughs> I'm gonna have to call this an evening for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've gotta clean up my mess before my company gets here. <laughs> That's number one. Number two is um, all we can do is wait at this point for the cornbread to bake. So that is what we will do. All right, well, this was unexpected. As I said, I just decided to go live a spur of the moment. I did not expect this to have an hour, last an hour and a half, but I enjoyed myself. I hope you folks didn't mind either. Ah, uh, yeah, I love anything sizzling in cast iron. So do I. At least as, as long as it's supposed to sizzle. <laughs> okay, but with that, as I said, I will do a couple of short videos revealing the cornbread and revealing the shepherd's pie. So, uh, thank you very much everybody for watching. Uh, again, I didn't expect to do this on a Sunday evening. I'm certainly glad I did, which means we just have, well, Wednesday to look forward to. And you can comment as always and visit my Facebook page and I will be seeing all of you again. So thank you everybody for showing up here. You know, the regulars like Rick Stumbaugh and uh, Grumpy Old Gringo and, um, Cynthia Wesley, and hello, Louis J. as well. My youngest has a fever. Ouch, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, just I uh, just hope uh, your youngest uh, gets better. Anyway, thank you, everybody, once again for showing up here. We will be doing this again, as I said, at least on Wednesday. And we will see what happens then. Again, I will show you what happens when the cornbread is revealed. And thank you, everybody, for coming by. Thank you for your time this evening. Have fun, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a good evening, everybody.